So hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sarah and today we're going to talk about the recent romance that I have read and you get to watch me figure out if there's something wrong with me because there might be. I read Pestilence by Laura Thalassa and I just want to know are you guys okay? Am I okay? What's wrong with us? Because what the what what? No. Okay. <laughs> so I have seen this for years, years. It's one of those really hyped books that everyone I feel like who reads fantasy romance has heard of this or knows about or something. And so it's getting its traditional publishing release. It was up for read now on NetGalley and I thought, okay, I'm going to read it. This gives me an excuse to read it and review it and I can finally find out what's going on. And, you know, I read like the first two or three chapters and it was on sale at Barnes & Noble so I picked it up because it's much easier. Right now I'm in a very physical book reading mode. Mood? Mood. And so... I went down that road. <laughs> First off, I can't tell you that I'm not going to continue the series because I'm probably going to continue the series, but I also should tell you that um, I don't, I don't recommend this <laughs> for a few reasons, right? And if you're okay with some of these reasons, I guess that's probably why you would read this anyway. It, there are so many red flags. This man is a terrible person. I'm sorry, he's not a person. At one point he tells her he is the embodiment of like disease. His name is Pestilence. Is he just a walking disease cloud? Is she having sex and babies with walking disease cloud? Is that what's going on? And let's not even get started on the whole fact that he drags her behind a horse, ties her wrist with rope to do so, shoots her in the back and like physically harms this woman repeatedly with like intent it's not accidental whoops i just shot you in the back multiple times <laughs> he hurts her he does it to be mean she's his prisoner i haven't even recapped this so this is <laughs> this is the story of sarah burns and these books take place a few years after the four horsemen of the apocalypse appear in the sky and, you know, humanity is doomed. This is like a apocalyptic event. And the horsemen disappear for a few years. People are like, oh, they're gone. They're not coming back. But then Pestilence wakes up and he is the first of the horsemen. And Pestilence is all like, whoop de doop de doop I'm gonna ride around and spread this disease and kill all of you. Well, Sarah Burns draws the short straw at her local fire department when they know that he's coming to their town and she's like okay I'm gonna go set him on fire which is hilarious to me that her last name is Burns and she decides to set him on fire but she sets him on fire it's fairly graphic in watching him die like he burns alive and then she shoots him I think in addition to burning him and then she like camps close by which don't do that <laughs> How would you get that smell out of your nose? Which, anyway. And she wakes up and he's all like, you did this to me. I'm going to take you prisoner and make you feel, you know, my pain or whatever. He's, he's making her hurt for what she did to him. Because he felt all of that pain. He felt the act of dying and death and the flame and the fire and all this stuff before he died and then came back. Because he's a horseman. You can't kill a horseman. I feel like this should be obvious. If they're divine, like four horsemen of the apocalypse, they were in the sky, he's lasted this long spreading, spreading this plague. Anyway, it's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Why did she think she could kill him and nobody else could? Why didn't she think that part? In fact, she does actually make the comment to herself, like, Why didn't, Why didn't I think anyone else had tried to kill him? Why? Well, anyway. And, he, and, to, and to go back to my rant. He continues to hurt her and abuse her and treat her badly and 
drag her along as he spreads this pestilence, this disease that slowly kills people. It sounds a bit like the Black Plague. It leaves big boils and like fevers and people die an agonizing death. At one point, and I will say this triggered me and I had to stop reading for a while, she watches a small child die from the plague and then continues to let, at this point, because at this point she could have run away at least once, more than once, continues to travel with him and there is a happily ever after. And I just, I put the book down when I finished reading it and I just thought for a minute, what the ever loving fuck <laughs> did I just read? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. And yet I, I want to know. I want to know how terrible the rest of them are. And I, I really want to know, are they the horsemen? Or are they some sort of alien species? Are they divinely sent? And that whole thing makes me a little uncomfortable to begin with because like, I don't know how I feel about the whole religious overtones of this. Is fantasy romance okay? Are we okay? Is this... <laughs> What? <laughs> and I know this isn't even like the weirdest thing out there, but what? I don't, I don't recommend it. Maybe I do if you like shenanigans like this, if you are like me and just drawn to train wrecks, maybe. But if you're just wanting to read something, no, 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 I have another recommendation. So to switch tones abruptly, I'm going to say read Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. <laughs> this I read shortly after Pestilence, and I wanted to have my own copy to brandish about wildly, but uh, it was already sold. The, the, the copy I wanted to get at Walmart was gone. But this I gave five stars. I loved this. This romance was completely worth the hype, and it's amazing. It is about a, who, a girl who wants to be an Olympic ice skater, and the hockey player who impedes her at every turn and they slowly go from being enemies to frenemies to friends and it's just delightful. The biggest thing that I can say about this that I loved so much was the communication in this was just perfect. Oh my gosh. Our main female character has been in therapy for many, many years she has learned to actually use the skills that she has gained in therapy. So she, she knows how to communicate. She knows how to see past what people say to what possibly they mean. And it's spelled out on page and it's really clear and it's fantastic. And I'll also say this does an amazing job uh, in the latter half of the book talking about disordered eating. So if that's something that bothers you, if you don't like reading about calorie tracking or someone's eating habits or problems, skip this one. After a certain point, we realize what's going on with her eating and she starts to take small steps to remedy this. As someone who has disordered eating, I adored that representation. I felt seen and I felt like it was a very good representation of that because it's fairly accurate to my own lived experience. So 100% recommend this book. <laughs> Not this book. Don't think I recommend this. Definitely res recommend Icebreaker. So, <laughs> I spent 10 minutes talking about that. Those two. Let's quickly talk about these three. Because I wanted this to be under 15 minutes. <laughs> so, I just finished Eyes on Me Today by Sarah Kate. This is the second Salacious Players Club. I did not like this as much as I liked uh, the first book. Was it, it wasn't Mercy, was it? Praise, praise, love praise. Didn't like this. The main reason I didn't like this was Garrett. He is obnoxious. He's obnoxious and I just wanted him to stop being obnoxious. But this is about Garrett and his stepsister Mia, who is a cam girl. Now they didn't grow up together. He was 21 when he met her for the first time when she was eight and they basically didn't see each other, but like maybe on holidays, if that. And she's 23 now and he's 36 and they start a relationship which was strange but doesn't bother me that much I just didn't like Garrett he frustrated me to no end I really loved Mia Mia was fantastic I loved that Mia wanted to take charge and Mia wanted to live her life for herself and to not be a pushover she was great I do have questions about the representation of sex workers and how it was I there was a lot in that that like there was 
it's a weird tone about sex workers. There wasn't as much sex positivity as I would think there should be in a book about a sex worker. And it, it just, I'm not sure. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like some of the things that were said and some of the things that were left unchallenged. So definitely not my favorite. Uh, I'll probably be reading the third one soon. <laughs> just to get the taste of that one out of my brain. I also read, reread, Barbarian Mine. I read the special edition. I've been collecting these by Ruby Dixon. This is the baby book. If you don't like babies in your romance, skip this one. I love babies. I love baby everything. Baby babies, human babies, animal babies, all of them. Hate pregnancy. That's a nightmare. But babies. I love babies. And this talks about babies. Um, Harlow is our heroine in this one. She is one of the girls that is, goes missing uh, in the second book. And she is taken by, I can't remember, Ruck by Ruck and he resonates to her doesn't really realize what that means and kind of kidnaps her but it's, it's like a Tarzan and Jane I think that's the way that Ruby talked about it in the um the not the epilogue but the afterward it's a Tarzan and Jane sort of situation and it was it was very cute I didn't love the Harlow and Ruck uh relationship Loved the baby stuff, like I said, but um, I feel like it just, it wasn't, it didn't work perfect for me, but it was fun. It's an, it's, it's an Ice Planet Barbarian. They're all fun. And the best book that I've read in the month, the past two or three weeks, is A Lady for the Duke by Alexis Hall. This is the story of Viola Carroll, and Viola died at Waterloo and came back to live her true life. She's a trans woman. And she has been, I think, living with her brother's sister for two or three years now. Um, it's been a few years. And she finds out that her best friend growing up, uh, the Duke of, what is it, the Duke of Gracewood, that's it, Justin, he is not dealing well. Um, he's not coping well. And he's mainly not dealing well. He's not coping well with the loss of his best friend. And so she and her brother's wife travel to Gracewood to try to help him and to help his younger sister who is trapped there with him. This book does so many things right and I <laughs> I just it's it's ruined me for historical romances. I just want to put it in the hands of all my historical romance fan fangirls that I know and just be like here 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 here. Read this. It's great. There are literary references in here that made me so happy. I giggled so many times when I spotted those references. I loved Justin's sister. I loved the talk about the PTSD, the depression, the representation of substance abuse and opium fixation. I just adored everything. It was slow and sweet and tender and everything I wanted. And the third act conflict wasn't so much a breakup as it was. <laughs> The most hilarious little conflict I've ever seen. And I'm speaking specifically the one that has to do with his sister. That little high point there at the end. There is a bit of tension. I mean, of course, there's going to be tension between Violet and Justin as they figure out where and what kind of life they can leave together. But I just love the, gl the slow, gradual grow to that point. And how after a certain point, it wasn't about the obvious. It was more about just finding their new life, their new norm. And I just, this was the highlight. This and Icebreaker have been, have renewed my faith in, in, in romance books. Truly, truly have renewed my faith in romance books. Pestilence has made me question it, but the other two have helped reaffirm it. So that is my recent romance reads, I believe. If there was something else I read and I don't remember it, then I guess it's just not getting mentioned here. Let me know if you've read any of these. Are we as fantasy romance readers okay? And I say that as like mainly targeted at myself because I don't actually read that much fantasy romance. I'm getting into it and now I'm wondering should I be worried? What do you think? <laughs> I'm curious. But like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff my friends and I will talk to you again soon. My posting schedule is a little all over the place right now because my life is but I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. There's a cat. Here, let me see. Hey, Pixie.
Pixie Pixie. You're so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. You're a pretty girl. Yeah. Can you say hi for the camera? Can you say hi? <laughs>